Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to an episode of my F1 2019 Ferrari manager career mode here for episode number four at the Portuguese Grand Prix at Tondela. If you guys did miss the previous one, then be sure to see that one as we maxed out really where the car was. That was kind of a very tricky race once again, you know, reality check after the first episode. Hoping we can do better at Tondela. Um, we'll have to see about that, but obviously Hamilton's AI is very, very decent in this mod. But uh, if we try and improve the car, keep on improving it, hopefully we can get to a point where we can see still uh, you know take the fight to him as it were but uh, we'll look through then the pit crew at the very start of this episode I don't think we'll have too many improvements to make though because we've got a lot of good people although they are getting a little bit tired so I'm going to have to swap some people out there uh, mainly that dude um 33 percent is that gonna be enough stamina really um might need to hire this guy actually 15 that's pretty decent i think that might go up to 16 once he comes into the team yes it will so we're gonna swap him out then and who's the worst out of these guys this dude right here so 16 16 14 um we've got no better person that's actually not tired yet uh these guys on the jacks and the fixings fine because i haven't used too much of the fixing of course uh responding to uh, fuji television after that race you had uh, some time to get used to the team now what's your main worries um we need to improve the car performance i think really that's gonna lower the morale for our drivers that's unfortunate maybe should have just not said anything like that but okay oh well but um yeah you can see the uh, the, the trajectory has been minus Five, minus five minus five in terms of uh, how uh you know the chairman has been happy with us so we need to hopefully get a plus five at some point here and try and bounce back maybe tondela can be the place i'm not too sure though uh, historically portugal is always a very difficult uh, track on the game because the tire wear is so high and the track is quite difficult to navigate in terms of uh uh, in terms of managing it. But we're going to go now to a political vote. Removal of the Milan GP, the Italian Grand Prix. That is crazy to me. Um, so I am going to vote against it. So I've only got one voting power, obviously, at the very start. But I'll vote against it because, obviously, it's it's our home race. So how it would be rude of us not to vote against it in terms of that. But we've got four people who would want to get rid of it. So that's quite amazing. So let's go on and see how it goes. We're going to skip to the end here. And we might see the end of the Italian Grand Prix. Let's see. Uh, no. Six to four. Thought so. You can't not have Milan. You can't not have the Italian Grand Prix. That would just be a bit crazy. Um, so it stays. It stays despite uh, the likes of uh, McLaren and uh, I think it was McLaren. I think it was McLaren or Mercedes and Red Bull wanting to get rid of it. But we now travel to Tondela. I actually forgot to make any parts there because I thought we had one on the go. So that's a bit annoying. But to be fair, we've got up to first now on the suspension. So we're near enough almost maxing out most of these. You can see Mercedes have improved a decent amount because we used to be first. First and uh, first in uh, acceleration and deceleration. So we need to work on those maybe and the engine. And you know what? I think I will work on the engine because that takes a long time uh, and it's quite a crucial part. So we'll go for 25 plus max. That's going to cost us 1.5 million four days after the Grand Prix. In hindsight, maybe could have got that engine done just in time for this race. But like I said, didn't realize that uh, we were so close to the Grand Prix and we didn't have anything made. But we've got a report, 10% chance of rain. So no rain probably for this weekend. So purely just going to be about us as a, as a unit and the car versus car of Mercedes. You can see their tire wear high. Going to take in... Um, well, last time we didn't get enough soft tires, did we? And uh, it kind of uh, bit us back maybe a little bit. But I'm not too sure. I think we need a lot more hards than we kind of think, really. And medium's not going to bother with, maybe... I think hard tires will be the way to go, honestly, because it's su such high tire wear, really. Uh, so we'll go for six, four, five. In terms of fit parts, I'm going to now have a little gander here. Um, I'm going to give Vettel that one now, because that is the better part, and the reliability is not too bad. Leclerc's delighted, uh, Vettel's delighted, so actually, I think we're all good. Yeah, that's yeah, that's good makeup there. Vettel's got a slightly better car, but you can see here. It's basically non-noticeable because these are such tiny differences in comparison to how big these slices of the pie chart are. So they're both lighted. Um, so let's get going. Should be all sunny. So pretty straightforward practice, I would say. And uh, fingers crossed, everyone, that we can uh, maybe a bit more be, be a bit more competitive. I hope, I hope, because uh, last race was was good, but was a little bit frustrating as well at the same time. Not being able to go any higher than that P2, P3 that we got. Right, don't have actually a good safe setup here for Tondello. So just going to have to kind of guess it a little bit. And we're probably going to have to do a few attempts here in practice to get the setup right um because the old one i have saved was all the way from way back the uh, renault the kind of first season that renault career we did last year 
um, in December. So it's uh, quite a few seasons ago, so it might not exactly work as good. Um, so we'll just see how it goes in this first run. Bring them back in after one run, obviously. Just quickly check the setup and then send them out for a longer stint. But, um, yeah, the hard tyres, I think we're probably going to use them a, a decent amount here. I'm going to... I don't know. I just I feel like I feel like let's try a bit of a more conservative strategy maybe this race. Try and get some track position maybe. Like I said, once Lewis gets into first, he seems to just be unbeatable. So we can try and get track position, just kind of hold him back maybe. That might be the motive here. But uh, looks like I'm going to have to go for a lot of high downforce then. Then we're done here. So I would say we'll swing it all the way over there. And the same thing here. So that all the way over there, although handling looking pretty okay, so maybe just a little bit towards understeer. So I'll go for a long stint now of eight laps on the hard tyres. Hopefully, that's the correct way to go uh, towards the right setup in Vettel. Very poor again, so yeah, mystifyingly lack of any sort of good setup here going on here. Although, you're seeing this, see, Vettel's okay here, so that would make me wonder if he wants to go to the lower downfalls, but Charles wants to go higher, so I'm gonna go to the very edge there. Um, and then for the handling, let's go towards understeer, it appear. And then towards acceleration, maybe just all the way over there, maybe. Yeah, I don't even know if that might be an excellent straight away. So let's just go for it then. Eight laps then, send them out, and uh, now sit back, relax, and uh, let them do their thing. Obviously, it's, uh, you know, not, not too shabby being the, the manager that you have to drive. Right, so we've got level three then on the hard tyres and the uh, race trim then. So we can bring them in on this lap. And uh, we're looking good. Two greats and an excellent. So a lot better there on this setup for Leclerc. Maybe even a little bit higher on the downforce potentially. I'm not too sure because uh, we were there and now we're here. So maybe a little bit more downforce even could could help us out here. Speed balance looks okay. So trying to keep that in check. Uh, go towards more understeer. Maybe a little click there. Uh, go back to qualifying trim now. And we'll do one set of soft tyres all the way to the end of the session. Vettel's going to be in, and he's two excellent and a great. So that was a massive swing there. That was okay in two pause to uh, two excellence and one great. 67 to 97. That's a massive swing. I'm going to leave that, actually, because if I fiddle with that, I probably will get that more wrong than right. So going to send him out there on the qualifying trim. Happy days with this setup. Looking good in terms of a pretty smooth one, actually. I thought that was going to be very fiddly. Only had to change it uh, twice there for Leclerc and once for Vettel, and we're all good. All right, then, so it's time for qualifying. Got all the knowledge we could, and it's to be all dry, so pretty straightforward choice in terms of soft tyre and the quali trim for both drivers there. Just had a little look at the mechanics components, but not really that useful for quali, um, and even really the race, even those uh, those those knowledge bases. But, yeah, all good. So we've got two excellents for Charles well in the end, and one great, so pretty much the, the mirror image for the two. Uh, so into Q1 should be nice and easy. I'm going to actually go out on a set of medium tyres, may as well use the tires we're not going to use the entire race weekend just kind of you know just just save save soft space just in case you never know because china you know we switched it around late i know because of the rain we were more aggressive because of that rain but uh you never know because I, I said you know i want to go conservative maybe in the race with the hard tire strategy but if in the middle of it i feel like you know what i want to go more aggressive it'll be good to just have an extra set of fresh softs if we need it really so uh, we'll just burn the mediums. Obviously, the car should have the pace to get through quite comfortably on the mediums, I would hope. So both purple, uh, air, uh, perfect and overheated that was on the tyre and the brakes. Um, but should be all good as we get through a bit of traffic there with the Toro Rosso. But both of them at lining and stern. Leclerc maybe a little bit of a toe off Vettel, perhaps, as he goes 400 faster than Sebastian Vettel. 131.8. Hamilton at the moment, two tenths off on the soft tyre. Interesting. Interesting. Looks like we have some very good pace, actually, there, uh, it would seem. But also, you never know. They might have just been not really showing up too much, not pushing too hard because the, the Red Bulls alter that far off. And I would think the Red Bulls would also be on pace a little bit more than, more so than that, really. So uh, we've seen that before, you know. I think well, I think we had that last episode where Hamilton came out of nowhere like the, with the one-second lap time after he's uh, not too bad in Q1 and Q2. So that's uh, always quite deceiving, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, all good. So onwards and upwards to Q2. Looks like the people that might be knocked out here are Giovinazzi, Kibitza, Alonso, Massa, Vern, and Van Dorn. So, again, the two fantasy teams, not in a good way. Even though Alonso and Massa are technically the strongest lineup, I believe, on the grid in terms of these stats in the game. The car obviously is not there yet, but uh, they're getting there. They'll get there. They're not too far off. Kibitza there. 2.1, 2.5, so give it a season. I reckon season two, if we get into that uh, season of this uh, career mode series. Um... I think they could uh, finally, you know, start to make their way up the table. Obviously, we'll have to see about that. But uh, on, to, on to Q2 then. All right, Q2. Massive span in the works. There is some very weird rain that was not forecasting anything. Literally no 
forecast of this. 10% of rain. Looks like it's occurred here. So that's changed things a little bit. Um, Actually, well, mm, it, it might do if it was raining the entire time. But you can see there, it's going to get dry later on. So I may as well just not waste the car. You know, no need to risk any kind of crash or anything like that out there. Just sit in the garage. You know, make, make, make a nice brew, cup of tea. Just relax and wait for the rain to come down. This will mix things up in terms of the track grip, though. Um, so that might change things uh, right now. But uh, let's see. I mean, Hamilton set a fast after the Grand Prix last race on Inters. So you never know. He could have a crazy, crazy time here. But at the moment there, Roman Grosjean doing quite well. The Red Bull's looking good in those conditions. Uh, no surprise there, though, to be honest. But uh, here we go now. Track's all dry. Track grip's going up. So we'll just send them out late on. Uh, with about two minutes to spare, I would say, like now, uh, on the uh, soft tyre there. Send out and send out. And this will be the tyre we start on in the race tomorrow. Hopefully, it's a decent, decent lap time. Just gets us in the top ten. No lockups, please. And we're all good for tomorrow, then, the race start. Lance Stroll goes fast as Carlos signs Yellow flags in sector three. Hopefully, that doesn't slow us down. Hopefully, there's not a yellow flag that slows, that slows that both down on this lap. As Vettel goes round, then purple first sector. It's going to be purple second sector. Obviously, a lot of people, though, saying purples. Hamilton's gone purple there. So he's top now with the 131.2. Vettel across the line. And it's, ooh, 800s behind. But there you go. Leclerc through. Two tens faster there. Mega stuff there from Charles Leclerc. Great performance with a 131. Nearly dead. Awesome stuff there. Right, into Q3. I think that's quite tasty then. That seems to be where the real pace of uh, Hamilton is. But uh, it's all very close. Vettel's close to match. But Leclerc coming in with the m massive clutch lap there. Can he do it again in the top 10 shootout for pole position? I wonder. Let's find out. Right, Q3 time. Track grips all just going to go up and up and up. So we're going to wait a little bit. Just going to go in the middle of the session. And then we'll go at the end of the session for a second lap there. Um, but let's try and just wait for a bit of a gap here that's going to come after number four comes across the line, I hope. So let's go now. I think that'll be a nice pocket of clean air that we can get there. Send out and wait a little bit. Send out. Uh, I'm going to let them do auto for this first lap there. And then we'll do manual for the second run. But hopefully a decent amount of clean air there. Vettel might just catch car number four there in yellow, which is uh, Hulkenberg there. Um, so we'll have to watch out for that. Hopefully he does not. Catch him fully. Let's see. Uh, Vettel. Ooh, yeah, he won't, he won't catch. Ooh, he might catch him a little bit. Purple, though. Purple first sector for Vettel. Green for Leclerc. Purple second. Remember, Hamilton's already set his lap time. It's a 131.6. A horrendous lap time for Hamilton there compared to what we were all doing in Q2. So as we come through then to the end of the lap there, purple, purple, Vettel across the line. And it will be provisional pole position for Sebastian Vettel. Leclerc across the line. And it's a provisional 1-2 for Ferrari there. Great stuff there. Obviously, the track grip was actually a lot lower at the start of this Q3 session than it was at the end of Q2. So that might be why Hamilton and Bottas and everyone really set slower lap times here and you can see exponentially it's going to go up then at the very end of this session so we're going to come in and basically send them back out straight away almost for that second flyer then and try and get another good lap time in to hopefully secure the pole position maybe even secure the one two I don't know let's see going to send Vettel out now as late as we dare on that lap then Leclerc same thing there send out change of tyres that should be enough time to go out Ooh, that is Going to be close for Leclerc, I feel. Very close. We're going to do Vettel manually. I'll do uh, Leclerc. I'll keep Leclerc on auto because uh, hopefully the computer can just get him through on that lap. But I will admit that's a very close shave on maybe actually having enough time to come in for that, that flyer. But Vettel, let's just judge this here. Try and bring these brakes down. Try and get it into a perfect region, hopefully. It's going to be difficult. Perfect and good. Pretty decent. Leclerc, where is he at? Hopefully he makes it through to the end of the lap. It's perfect overheated. And he'll just make it across the line with seven seconds to go. But Hamilton is on purple. So we've got competition here for pole position. He's on a good lap. It's two purples. Hamilton, he's going to come spoil the party across the line. Hamilton goes faster by 800s though only. So Vettel just needs to improve by a little bit. But he's only green green. That's a bit worrying. And Leclerc's white green. That's not good. Across the line. What's it going to be? Is it going to be enough? Oh, What? Three hundredths of a second there. He can't get it. And Leclerc across the line. He improves, but not to be. It's going to be 2-3 for us. And Hamilton with the pole position once again. But it's so much closer than it was at China. But that's so frustrating. Three tenths. 
mega quali close qualifying though, but both Red Bulls out qualify uh, Bottas there. So clearly the Mercedes car really isn't that strong actually this year because they both out qualified Bottas. It really is just Hamilton dragging that car up there. Um, so for us, you know, it's that close. We had pedigree in Q2 and Q1. Um, let's hope for a, let's hope for a better race than we had at China. Hopefully we can actually do something about Hamilton and attack him. It's crucial though at the start of this race we need to jump him. Trap position will be so key of trying to you know control Hamilton basically in this race. Right, so I forgot once again to check the tire wear levels of the tires. So I don't know how long these tires will really go. I know how long these tires will go for 11 laps only. Um, so I would say maybe just guessing. Probably the softs only go 15, 14 laps, even if they're fresh. So I would say the hard tyres are the way to go, you know. If we're going 11 laps here, and then maybe... Well, that will well, that be... I, I'm, they're not going to make 11 laps. They'll make 10 laps. So 27 laps are left in the Grand Prix. That's going to be, you know, tear... Like, what, what are we talking about? 13 laps then, split, if you half, half that... Maybe that's going to be good enough for an aggressive hard tire choice, maybe, or stretch the hards. I'm not too sure, really. Um, and knowing knowing Tondela from previous experience, the hard tires won't go that long either. So I'm going to just kind of take a stab in the dark, and I'm going to put knowledge on the hard tires and not on the softs, and just hope that pays off. We'll see. Um, but uh, in terms of drive strategy, pushing at the start, crucial. We need to get a good start. Vettel... Or Leclerc, really, just needs to nail Hamilton into turn one and the opening few turns and get into that first place. And then we can actually do something here. We go then to five red lights for the Portuguese Grand Prix. Vettel second, Leclerc third to five red lights. And we are underway. And it's a slow start there for both us guys. It's a good one for Gasly in the Red Bull and a great one for Lewis Hamilton. That is exactly what we did not need. And we're down to third and fourth there. And we have to try and overtake one Red Bull before we even have a go at Hamilton there. It's been a good start for the two Renaults as well. Look at them go. P5 and 6 there. Lofty ahead of Verstappen. Bottas really struggling. Raikkonen almost gets him for P8 there, but Vettel now attacking Gassi. Can he get him back? Yes, he can. Up into second place. Leclerc down the inside for third as well, so we're back into P2 and 3, and now we start the chase, but uh, these guys fighting a little bit here. Oh, Leclerc down the inside. These guys, I don't really need them fighting, so I'm going to say uh, do I say allow teammate through? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's so early in the season, but, you know, we don't if we don't get Hamilton, we, we're not going to, you know, Get, get anything in this race other than two and three. So, I don't know. If Leclerc can get past him on this lap, then fair play. But if not, then not. But there we go. Leclerc does get past. Okay. Game on then. Game on. Going to start conserving the tyres for Sebastian Vettel because I know uh, that's going to be an issue again. So, conserve for both these guys. Let's go high. And let's just calm things down a little bit here on the tyre wear. But uh, Leclerc through into second place. Fair play. Okay. The, the, the power has changed a little bit there. Right. Tyre wear has been... Horrendous with Leclerc. 27% tyre wear there. This guy really just can't keep his tyres in. So I want to push in now. And I think it will be two sets of hard tyres, you know, for this race for Leclerc at least. Because, yeah, he just can't keep his tyres in check that much there. Got an early pit stop for Bottas there. So I'm going to use that. Going to come in with Leclerc. Hard tyres. Strap those on. Going to go for the fast pit stop. Risk it. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? That mistake risk. 7.7 is quite high. Let's go balanced. Then let's go. I can't risk it for fast. We've got a drive through for Carlos Sainz. The gap is already 4.3 to Hamilton. Not looking good, really, as Leclerc comes in. 9% tire wear. Those tires went off the absolute cliff there. Vettel will push in. And it's a mistake still on the rear left, even despite having balanced. It's a mistake for Leclerc. But he's out on the hards then. And let's now start pushing. Going to have to go medium. Already burned so much fuel here in this race then. Pushing hard. Vettel's gained 1.3. That's good. 1.9, very good. He might even undercut, he might even overcut Leclerc. Let's go balanced again. Really hope that doesn't have a mistake though. Come on, please no mistake, please no mistake, please no mistake. Yes, good. And he is going to jump Leclerc. He's going to jump Leclerc there with that good uh, good uh, in-lap and pit stop there. But we're 7.2 behind Hamilton. That is ridiculous. All right, Carlos Sainz has crashed. Massive uh, mechanical failure. Not a crash, actually. Massive engine failure there. So, uh, sit right now. Lap 13. 6.1 the gap. We have brought that gap down by about 7 tenths there. So, Vettel slowly chipping away and trying to, you know, pull Hamilton in a bit. Leclerc, I've got on massive fuel save and conserve because his fuel was off the charts there. And I'm thinking we're going to have to sacrifice him a little bit and try and maybe use him. 
as a bit of a blockade for Hamilton, maybe. If Hamilton pits and comes out behind him, try and use that as a blockade, I think, um, sort of, is the plan, I think, really. I know it's kind of very Ferrari tactics there, really, but uh, it's needed when, we, when we're trying to fight one car here and we don't have... Well, do I have the out and out pace? I don't know what what I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I some of you guys were saying, you know, look into the mod and maybe tweak Hamilton a little bit. I have. I've looked into his mod. I, I I actually can't explain it. He's got no more attributes anymore. He used to have a perk of if he's in first, he's a nightmare. I took that out of the mod, and he's still this rapid in first place. It's just, it's just, something's just fundamentally, he's just crazy when he gets into first place. Um, and it's just very annoying, really. All right, we've got a worn tyre signal for Leclerc already on lap 22 on 29% wear. He really is not that great at tyre saving, is he, on this mod? Uh, he's 10 seconds back from Vettel. Vettel has been catching Hamilton now. The gap's 4.7, so he brought that gap down by about 2 seconds by pushing the fuel a little bit. But we're getting towards that tyre wear window stage. Hamilton's got way more worn tyres than Vettel does, though. So I'm going to try and stretch this thing a little bit if we can with Vettel. And with Leclerc, I'm going to keep on going. I need to try and sacrifice him, basically, and try and use him as a bit of a blockade, really, on Hamilton. So I'm hoping Hamilton pits and gets behind Leclerc. That's exactly what we need if we have any chance of doing anything, really, here. Uh, and no, it's not worked. It, he's pit, and he's come out ahead of Leclerc. Ha oh, my God. This is so frustrating. How has that worked? Right, coming in with Leclerc at 26. We're pushing on with Vettel. I know the cliff is a little bit less on the hard tyre, so just taking the risk with Vettel and pushing on. He's still getting one tenth despite pushing for three laps straight there, so that's at least something. Um, but I've just, I've lot, I've, I've, I'm lo I'm starting to already lose the will of like, you know, what are we meant to do to try and combat Lewis Hamilton? It's just stupidly crazy how quick he is in this mod. It's just ridiculous. Right, pit in. Okay. Fast pit stop, please no mistake, please no mistake, good stuff. Right, out in second, gaps 5.8, we're on the hard tyres, so we can push harder than Hamilton can, but we've burned so much fuel there, it's a joke. Right, Syrup lap 33 then, Leclerc P3, all good, 20 seconds ahead of Bottas, that's just comfortable, you know, Bottas is absolutely horrendous. And we're all good in P3, Leclerc. He'll go to the end, conserving. We've got fuel to burn, actually, so we can just go high to the end of the race. Vettel, though, because we burned so much fuel in the three in-laps, uh, we've had to save fuel. We're on fuel saving right now. Hamilton, though, the only thing that's the only thing going here is he's got worn tyres. He's 27% wear, and he's nursing those tyres. Oh, what the hell just happened there? Leclerc just... What?! He just look, collided with Lando Norris. Oh, he's now under inve under investigation. We've got a pit now to fix. Oh, my God. Front wing and suspension. Right. Uh, fast pit stop, please. Um, come in as fast as you can, mate. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, Leclerc. Come on. Right. Uh, Vettel, though. Uh, second place. 7.6 off because we're saving fuel here. But the tire wear is good. We're 61%. We're comfortably to the end of this Grand Prix. I've got to beg now. Racing gods. Can Hamilton wear out his tyres any more, please? Please, racing gods. This needs to happen. And on lap 35, which is actually now, I'm, I'm, I'm low-key tempted to start pushing like a stabbed rat here. I think we need to. Let's go medium, start pushing, and then we'll go overtake mode and start pushing even more. But Leclerc makes his pit stop. It's a slow one there. Gets out in P4, but he's on soft tyres now. On delay, mate. On delay. You're now... Oh, my lord. You're behind Verstappen as well. Right, you've got 10 seconds to catch up, Leclerc, on soft tyres. Do it, otherwise we're having words. Meanwhile, Vettel, what are we saying here? Seven seconds. Let's start pushing now. Oh, there we go. Hamilton's pit. Hamilton's pit. Hamilton's pit. Yes. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. The conservative strategy is actually working off the two hard tyres strategies. Yes. Okay, okay. Calm down. Calm down. Right. Conserve. Conserve. We need to bring these tyre times back into check now. Because now we're not... Well, actually, you know what? Screw it. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Go. Hi. Because Hamilton's actually 2.5 ahead of us. And we're on the last half of the Grand Prix. Just keep pushing. Keep pushing, Vettel. Come on. Leclerc setting the fast half of the Grand Prix, probably. But Vettel, 2.8 ahead of Hamilton. Absolute great stuff there. Leclerc, though, two purple sectors. He's into the last lap of the Grand Prix. Vett Verstappen's just there. He could get him on the last lap. But Vettel, the Veltmeister, 2.6, 2.5 the gap. As we go through the last few corners, he's going to do it. Low fuel. Oh, my God. On the line, he'll run out of fuel. Across the line. It's the win. It's the win at the Portuguese Grand Prix. Suck it, Hamilton. Suck it. Absolutely suck it.
Second place for Hamilton. Leclerc, unfortunately, only gets P4 with that crash he had with Lando Norris. And he's got... Oh, no. He's going to run out of fuel on the line. <laughs> uh, well, that's what you get, uh, Leclerc, for crashing. I just don't pay attention to you. Because, obviously, I'm doing the very Ferrari way of managing a race. of only caring about one driver here at a time. Sebastian Vettel, though. What a man. What a man. First place. Conservative strategy for the win. Paid off there. And we've got a win at the Portuguese Grand Prix. Get in there. And Sebastian Vettel at the end as well gets the fast lap of the Grand Prix as well. Somehow, actually, right at the end there. It must have been literally on the last lap maybe because Leclerc was looking pretty good for the fast lap of the Grand Prix beforehand there. So 27 points in the bag then because it's two for the fast lap in this mod. And there we go. The gold trophy. Absolutely awesome. I was so... I was getting ready just to be like, I'm just so depressed now. We've had three races in a row where Hamilton just walked away with it. But there we go. The conservative strategy paid off. We get a win. It doesn't mean much for the Drivers' Championship there, I will admit. As well as the Constructors, because Leclerc obviously got beaten by Bottas in the end after crashing with Lando Norris. But it's at least something. It's something to keep the Tifosi going. It's something to keep the chairman going. And hopefully is a little bit of a way to hopefully not get us fired before the end of this season. Because I feel like that's almost the goal of this first season. Is building up the car and not getting fired. Because I don't think we can actually make a proper title challenge this year, to be honest. But uh, well, yeah, you never know. We'll see about that, but absolutely awesome stuff there. Sebastian Vettel, race winner. Uh, money in the bank, all good, green, green. And so that caps off actually a very happy episode then. I was actually prepared for that to be a very annoying, uh, angry episode. But in the end, absolute euphoria. So guys, if you did enjoy that one as much as I did at the end there, then be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you are new around here, do subscribe for weekly foreign content. I've been Aaron for Have a good day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.